Next on Rugby Wrap-Up, USA Rugby head coach Gary Gold and Nate Augsburger with an historic announcement. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub. The Murphy Kennedy Group, founded with the idea that construction can be done better. And Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hey everybody and welcome back for this special edition of Rugby Wrap-Up with USA Rugby head coach Gary Gold and Nate Augsburger, the cap- the captain the last time a team that we're going to talk about came to the United States, but we'll get to that in a second, and Mr. Stephen Lewis, who we all know from all of his various hats in rugby. Gentlemen, welcome. Nate, I just want to start with you first, put you right under the gun. What is 491? 491 is my eagle number, sir. Okay, good, because Coach Gold was ready to cut you on the spot if you didn't know that. He didn't tell you that. That was going to be a surprise. We weren't sure. We had a production meeting about it. We went for the clicks, as they say. Steve, you just got back from your big trip to uh, Monaco and Jamaica with the Jamaican Sevens team, and Ireland ended your dream. Is that not true? Actually, France ended our dreams, and then Hong Kong, and then Chile. But yeah, Ireland uh, got the spot in the men's side. So uh, congrats to them. They deserved it thoroughly. And then on the women's side, no surprises. France and Russia, the two professional teams, went through. So it kind of went to form. All right. And last but not least, I want to welcome Mr. Mr. Gary Gold, the head coach of Team USA. Gary, some exciting times now that the COVID seems to be over. It is exciting, Matty. Yeah, just to get back to rugby. Everybody's uh, just chomping at the bit, and all we want to do is just get back into camp and get back onto the field and, and just try and play some rugby and, uh, you know, take the good work that all the guys the MLR clubs have done and hopefully, you know, in a few days in England, next week, put it together and, and get onto the field uh, in two weeks' time against England. But very exciting, um, apprehensive, but exciting um, times at the moment. Uh, obviously, with travel and with COVID and with all the hoops you have to jump through, it's a little bit of an unknown. Um, again, traveling abroad again for the first time in a long time. From How long has it been? It's two years. Just short of two years. Short of two years before we, since we last played. Yeah. Well, it's nothing like you know working off the rust against England and Ireland on the road, right? <laughs> yeah, that's in the deep end. But as we said before, Matty, you know, we can't, we can't moan about it. You know, here we are a couple of years ago crying out for tier one competition and wanting to get better. And now we got it. Now we got to take it, you know, and, uh, you know, we've got to, we've got to be positive about it. So we're very excited, very excited to get out there and play and um, show what we're worth. Would, would be ideal if we didn't have injuries to the big names that we've got, but you know, that always opens a door for younger guys and some guys have really excelled in the MLR this year. So we're excited to see if they can all make a step up. I'm just very excited to actually go and represent them the MLR out there as well. So speaking of the injuries, briefly, uh, I got a communication back from A.J. McGinty where he said the injury wasn't as bad as expected, and he is um, post-surgery now. What are the expectations with him? Well, A.J. is a great pro. You know? so A.J. is going to do everything to rehab himself. I mean, again, just absolute guttering blow for him just to obviously miss out on sales run in the playoffs and you know what could have or should have been for them potentially, which is obviously winning the premiership and then joining us and helping us build uh, towards rugby world cup qualifiers, which is really where our priority is, you know, and, 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 and that culminating in a couple of games against England and Ireland. So he's on track to hopefully still be ready for those rugby world cup qualifiers in September, uh, which is, which is great news. I mean, at the time of watching that injury, we all thought that it was potentially going to be an ACL and, and thank goodness it's not. And, just a meniscus and they've gone in and put a little stitch in there and I think he'll, he'll be good to go quite shortly. Good pro, so he looks after himself as well. Nate, how's your health? Getting there. Getting there, Matt. Just working hard and, uh, yeah, healing up. Actually, just great to see Nate's smiling face. Um, my question would have been the same one. When do, you, when do you think you'll get back on a field, number one, for all your New York fans? Yeah, well, uh, I'm hoping to squeeze out a or two here. Um, in the MLR season. So I've been, I've been very fortunate that the healing process has gone uh, pretty swiftly. And you had just come back from an injury and had the misfortune of getting injured again, right? Yep. Yep. Thanks for highlighting that, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm just, 
we miss you, man. That's all. It's this. That's what this is about. We miss you, but and we we look forward to seeing you on the on the pitch again as soon as possible. But but Gary, getting back to that long layoff, I don't think people fully understand, especially when they see you playing out there again. The 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 brief amount of time that you're going to have to work with the guys to get that two years of rust off, and it's not even two years of rust. It's getting to know the play, you know, the players getting to know themselves or and each other rather, and at least this time you have guys that'll be battle tested from different professional setups, including major league rugby. Yes, correct. That is, that is obviously one of the windfalls. I mean, the fact that we've got guys playing rugby, which is, you know, substantially different to what it was three or four years ago when, you know, we were getting into certain camps at certain times of the year, particularly around November, you know, you were getting guys the rugby ball for three months. So at least the guys are playing rugby. And, and to a decent enough level. Um, and again, just the, the difficulty with COVID is that a lot of the MLR clubs want to start late. You know, so they've used the season as a build-up from a fitness point of view. And again, that's unfortunately meant, which is absolutely nobody's fault at all. It's just what happened with COVID and starting the preseason late, which means that as guys have started getting more and more game time, unfortunately, some guys are going to break down. And that's what's happened. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a crazy old time at the moment now. And, and, you know, this is an opportunity, you know, when we play against teams like this, it sounds crazy, but this is an opportunity as well also to blood a whole lot of youngsters. You know, this is the time to pick them. A, a our hand is forced, number one, because we don't really have a choice. But B, you know, they're playing well enough in the MLR and then we want to reward them, you know. And so we've got uh, 11 potentially a uh, 12 one being announced this week of an uncapped player, of uncapped Eagles who are coming on tour, which is exciting. It's really, really exciting. It's daunting as on the one hand, but particularly when you take into consideration the level and the of, and the competency of the opposition that we're going to be playing against. But it is really exciting, you know, to to be blooding youngsters and letting people, uh, young guys, play for the Eagles for the first time and put the jersey on. So give them opportunities which are lifelong dreams. So. And all these guys want to play against the best. I mean, I mean Nate, you 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 got to be salivating at the chance to play against the likes of England and Ireland, specifically over there, right, to get that full exposure, right, and that experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like Gary almost hinted at, I mean, there aren't that many opportunities where you get to go up against an England or an Ireland. Um, I think all the way, all the way till uh, 2019 World Cup to finally um, watch our boys go up against England since I've been with the squad. And so it's just really exciting. Anytime you get a chance, um, one, to put on the jersey, but then to go up against the opposition like that. You're, you're... And, and on the 4th of July. I mean, let's, let's not forget that. So there'll be fireworks and there'll be fireworks. Ed, Coach, you, you got a chance at an historic sweep against Ireland at this history-making match at the Las Vegas Raiders home field, Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. And apparently this October 30th is going to kick off in an annual competition? It will be an annual event, yes. Uh, no, we're very excited. We're very excited. We're here today. Um, the stadium is absolutely magnificent. I think you just sidestepped. I like the way you sidestepped the sweep of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing Ireland on the 30th of October in Las Vegas. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. It's not your first rodeo, is it, Coach? <laughs> So what are you what are you looking to gain out of this? You got the experience for the players. Uh, you get some young players blooded, but is there anything in particular you're looking for in development from somebody or somebody in particular that you want to see under the gun? No, not anybody in particular. But it was really interesting because when we did play Ireland at the end of 2018, after what was year for us on the field, and we went into Dublin, uh, and we you know we really got a spanking there. And it was really interesting because, you know, we hung in the game for like 55 minutes. And then when Ireland turned the burners on, you know, we couldn't keep up. And, you know, we realized then from a strength and conditioning point of view is that, that that's the difference between where we, where we were and where we want to be. And again, unfortunately, the two-year layoff has obviously set us back. But that's what we're looking to try and build up again. You know, we want to try and get to a build up to a stage where we can, where we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tier 1 teams. You know, and, and if it doesn't necessarily mean that we win the game, that at least we've 
come out of the game with huge credibility and we've you know fired a good couple of shots against them and put them under pressure and and you know dare I say it, it could it could be another Scotland situation where we are actually able to win a game but that's slightly not necessarily at this moment in time the biggest thing it's 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 more for uh, our play group and our depth chart of our players at the moment to be getting experience against these better teams so that we don't go in as raw as we did in the last World Cup that the next World Cup we can have a lot more experience of playing with the rugby teams and in, in in uh, high pressure situations. Yeah, I mean, I mean, think that the key point is uh, gratitude, right? The fact that we are playing after this horrific year. So to see the national team back out there competing is, is kind of the most important thing. Um, and, and while these, these fixtures are superb, right? That they, they get the attention, they get the enthusiasm, the energy going. The key games this year are the Canadian home and, home and away. It's the World Cup qualifiers that Gary's uh, work is focused towards. And this stuff is it's not the window dressing, it all helps, but those Canada games are the big games this year. Yeah, I would agree with that, Steve, uh, 100%. I mean, uh, uh, you know, going into Christmas this year, for example, you know, our absolute clear, clear goal that by the end of this year, you know, we really want to put ourselves in a position where we've qualified for the Rugby World Cup, especially, you know, under the circumstances, and we spoke a little bit about it you know, earlier in, in Vegas, is with our bid in for Rugby World Cup as well and being able to host an event at such a magnificent stadium, like you know, puts us in the in the eyes of the world rugby on, on the world rugby stage. I beg your pardon. And so it's really important from our point of view that a we qualify for a rugby world cup, and b that we've shown that we're improving and we can go toe to toe with teams like this. And then obviously coupled off with having a magnificent venue like this and being able to put on a showpiece on Halloween weekend here in Vegas, you know, with all supporters is, is going to be, you know, it's it's you know you you, you almost can't. You, you you put you can't write the script any better for it to be a fantastic event. So, and I think that that's that's also important for that. That's going to be a showpiece for you know, what we can provide if 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 or when we get a rugby world cup. Steve, you got your leprechaun costume ready? I was going to say Halloween weekend. <laughs> can't wait! I can't wait. So, coach, for the people at home that don't know, what is it that you guys have to accomplish to qualify for the World Cup in 2023? We've got a double header against Canada in September, um, and on aggregate, we have to win those two games. Um, and in order, and and if if we are able to win those two games, we then progress to another double header in the first two weeks of October, which will probably be a, a, against the the well, it will be against the top team in South America, um, who who will have qualified through their pool similarly. Um, so, which I think would be Uruguay, Chile, Brazil. Yeah those guys, because Argentina have already qualified and we will then play them in a double header and in a similar So it's going to be four very tough weeks of rugby. And uh, So it's to, just, to, it's not a double header on the same day like we have in baseball. It's back-to-back no. games a week apart. Yes, yes, and the aggregate of those games. Is there a scenario where you still move on to that uh, competition against the South, Mar- South American club if you split with Canada? There is a scenario for that, and then there's also a scenario for one of the teams to go into a repechage next year should the team that doesn't qualify this year still gets an opportunity next year. Copy that. Uh, Steve, any final questions before we let these guys go? Yes, Gary, what's, what's your favorite band from Glasgow? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my favorite band from Glasgow is a band called Beacon Blue. There you go, there oh. you go. It's not not the Bay City Rollers. No, yeah, but about ten years later, Matt, our time, our generation, not yours. <laughs> Copy that. Copy that. Nate, what do you want to say to people out there? Hey, I just want uh, everyone to know that you know, support USA Rugby, support the boys going into England and Ireland in the next couple of weeks. I'm just really excited to watch guys compete, man. We, we need to get back out on that field. So hopefully, uh, that's what you see. You will be leading the charge here. And uh, we'll have a really competitive uh, campaign the rest of the year. And Nate, since being a captain against Ireland is old hat for you, how do you pass that experience on to the younger guys? I think the most I got, and, you know, to, to Gary's point, just getting guys experience at that speed and that tempo and that level is huge. I remember uh, the first 20 minutes of that Ireland game was probably the fastest rugby I ever played, and I'll, I'll never forget it. And it's almost like a boxer. You kind of you, you figure out what it feels like to go five rounds and then you kind of hunt to see if you can go 12. So hopefully uh, we can all just 
keep growing, keep getting better, and um, give these guys uh, a proper competition October 30th. Well, the only way to get better is to play against the best, right, Coach? That's it. That's exactly right. All right. Well, I think you guys are, are, are in good hands with Coach Gold there, Nate. And, Coach, we look forward to seeing your, your team out there on the pitch. Really excited about these matches coming up. I'm ready to be snuck into a suitcase to go over to, to, to Great Britain and to Ireland if you, if, you need a, if you need a representation from here. And uh, certainly be looking to go to Las Vegas with my man in the costume, Steve Lewis, as a leprechaun. On that <laughs> note, gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming in. On behalf of Mr. Gary Gold, the head coach, Team USA, Nate Augsburger, and Steve Lewis, I'm Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time. But in the meantime, check out our other segments, including The Rugby Odds, featuring WWE Hall of Famer John Bradshaw Layfield, the world's best sports better ever in the Philly Godfather, and Rugby's Gift, Gift A. Bailu, our Major League Rugby show, Martial Law, The Zack Attack, and please sign up for our Rugby Wrap-Up Red Cross Blood Donor Team. <laughs>